In this time of social distancing amid the global pandemic, there are several stories that may help us to cope. The story of Ezekiel is one of them. A bit of his history and perspective on this special reflection on the Accessible Faith Project. Hi there, I'm John and welcome to the Accessible Faith Project. If you're new here and looking for insights into the Bible, faith and history in ways that will engage your brain, then please hit subscribe and that little bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. Some of the most powerful and profound insights that we find in the Bible come out of times of great hardship and anxiety. Point blank, it seems as if there is worry and trouble, the words that truly endure are the ones that focus on hope, that look forward, even when the people themselves are literally standing in charred ash. It is not to say that there weren't voices of concern or pessimism about the future of the time. In fact, they were probably all too abundant. But the words that truly endure are the ones that look ahead with a sense of hope, of optimism, proclaiming loudly that God is clearly at work even when all around them seems to be hopeless. Ezekiel knew this more than most. As a prophet, he lived in perhaps one of the most devastating times that the people of Israel had ever experienced, the outright failure, collapse, and destruction of the entire nation of Israel. Ezekiel himself would be dragged into exile to an encampment south of the city of Babylon where he would spend the rest of his days. As much as we lament about the decline of the church in North America, what Ezekiel and the people of his day experienced was far worse, and the outlook for the future by all accounts was extraordinarily bleak. The trash bin of history is filled with tiny kingdoms having been swallowed up by the great empires and certainly following both Assyrian and Babylonian expansion, other small nations in the area never recovered. Even the North Kingdom of Israel 200 years before Ezekiel had been demolished by the Assyrians and though history would never be anything more than a client state for occupying powers. When Jerusalem and Judea fell in Ezekiel's time, the prospect was just as bleak and it seemed likely that the Israelite identity would fade and their quirky monotheistic faith would only be ever found in history books. But we know that's not what happened in the long run. It was certainly true that Jerusalem was destroyed by the Babylonians, along with the great temple Solomon had built. It was true that the people had been scattered to the corners of the empire with some of the best and brightest held captive in Babylon. For 80 years, for two full generations, children were raised without a homeland, as prisoners or exiles for their entire lives. By all accounts, this would have demolished their national identity, their sense of who they were. But as the darkness was falling, Two prophets in particular, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, spoke of a hope that God would not abandon the people and that something entirely new was coming. Throughout much of Ezekiel, there is this theme contrasting the current despair that everyone was experiencing with the hope of something new to come. While it is often read at Pentecost, during the season of Lent, the image of the Valley of Dry Bones take on a much more poignant tone. Today, when worship services are cancelled and we are told to stay at home and away from each other to keep each other safe, it is hard to keep from sliding into a sense of despair. And yet, people of faith have endured pandemics far worse than this one, as recently as a hundred years ago. When we find ourselves concerned about the future or worried about what is to come, remember Ezekiel's hope and his perspective when he wrote those words. We can take it either two ways. We can either treat Ezekiel as being hopelessly deluded in his optimistic outlook, like Monty Python's Black Knight from the Holy Grail, or maybe this insight shows us something more about our own tendency to be pessimistic about things. After all, pessimism is an expression of fear, and as Jesus once taught his disciples that fear is what erodes our faith, not doubt. Ezekiel is saying that no matter what happens, God prevails. There is no place that is too far from God's love and vision for a better world. No matter how dark the present may seem, God is present now and will be present in generations far beyond our own, acting and working in ways far beyond our imagination. Our hope in God, our trust that ultimately in all things God and Christ wins out no matter what the present circumstances might be. Justice and peace will reign, and this is the hope that we have. 
But this type of optimism is not simply a passive one or out of a sense of resignation saying God is in charge and we'll be doing something in the future, but not now. That's not what Ezekiel was saying at all. Both he and Jeremiah implored the survivors of the Babylonian onslaught to remain faithful, to not lose hope, to keep the candle of faith burning within them in the midst of the darkness. God will indeed prevail. There is hope for the future. So live your lives now in the present with this kind of living hope. And that's what the people did. And guess what? They discovered something new about their faith. They learned that God's promises and love continued to be with them even though their beloved temple had been smashed and burned beyond all recognition. They learned that God continued to be present with them in a strange land, and they began to understand God not as their own local deity, but in fact the Lord of all creation. By keeping their hope alive, the very hope that Ezekiel had called them to, their own faith evolved into something new which would allow them to not only survive the exile, but would grow, survive, and thrive until this very day in both Judaism and Christianity. It would open the door to the understanding of a Messiah of God walking among us, showing us a glimpse of the kingdom of God in the person and work of a humble Galilean teacher. Ezekiel's hope teaches us to remember that in times of darkness, God remains very much in charge and it allows us the strength to live out our lives each day, even when we might feel overwhelmed and isolated by circumstance. But know this, in God, we are not alone, not for a day, not for an instance. Even in a time of physical distancing or social distancing and in the aftermath to come, we are not alone. Amen.